That was lovely, Tom. Thank you. Um, how many of you guys have never been in this space before? I feel like I've seen some newbies. Hello. I think a few escaped right before I came up here. Hello. I want to tell you something about being new and something about being afraid and then something about resolving to be new and to not be afraid. About three and a half years ago, my family and I came here. We came from Durham, North Carolina. We were at Duke, and I felt like I was really big shit because of that. I wasn't actually the one who worked there. I was just the one who went to bed with the one who worked there. <laughs> and that felt good. And then we came here, and it was this little town. And there was no crime. And I wasn't afraid to get out of my car when I went to the grocery store and there was this place called the co-op. <laughs> and people had dreadlocks. <laughs> and I felt this community immediately of people who were like me that did not necessarily look like me. I could wear my jeans. And I could be pretty nondescript except in my accent. And it was great. And about a year in, I was here and I, I had a really nasty concussion. When I say nasty, I mean I lost 60% of my words. And I like to talk, so this really sucked. <laughs> and I also like to read. I was one who read Eckhart Tolle. And I read about being a better person, although I come off as someone who's really good at being bad. And that's not a lie. <laughs> I think it's all balance. But pretty soon after I had that nasty concussion, I got another concussion that made it even worse. And this is not like, oh, let's feel really bad for Danielle. This is a really um, like excellent setup to the point of my story. <laughs> the months after that occurred, I really started to realize who the people were around me because I no longer could create bubbles of who I thought they were. The brain injury that I had not only took away 60% of my words and made me very easily agitated and someone who emotionally was just, you knew who I was and you knew how I felt because I was incapable of keeping it in. It was around that point that I came into this place mainly because I could not stand my, at that point, four-year-old child, and I needed an hour and a half without him. <laughs> this congregation gives free childcare to folks who need to come in for a moment of whatever they need in this space. And I came in and what I saw was, wow, these people don't look like me either, and they sure don't sound like me, but damn, I feel like I'm at home. <laughs> And I'm someone who, because I had the incapability of restraining my emotions, I often sat in the back and I cried. And almost no one said anything about it because I feel like there was this moment where people knew because you're the kind of people who know what other people need. And at that point in time, I did not need anything other than just to be. And I look at your faces, and I want to say I thank you for that. And I'm at another crossroads. And it's not just about me thanking you for who you are. I'm still at this point where I'm not fully capable of holding my emotions in. It is a challenge. It is almost like acting class for me. But my intention is to come to this agreement between who I feel like I am, who I want to be with other people, how to let other people be who they really are around me without me giving off this idea or presence of it's not okay to be who you are. I don't want that, that is my intention. I'm really happy to be here today, although I'm pretty scared to stand up here because I have some great but also scary news. 
my husband Dan has been offered a job at the University of Georgia. Yeah. So great in so many ways. Really exciting. Moving back to a city. Moving back to some crime that I'm going to have to figure out how to deal with and create intentions that are not scary. Intentions that wrap up these Eckhart Tolle moments and make it positive when on the inside, like right now, I'm afraid. Every night since my concussion, I've meditated. The challenge is, is that with a really bad brain injury, you don't typically remember what the day before was like. And if you write notes, which I have copious amounts of notes, I don't remember where I wrote those notes. I assume this is what it's like to be elderly. And I mean that not in a shitty way, but I think that is what my grandmother would say. She would say, you know, I have these thoughts, I just don't remember where I put them. So, I have visited Athens, Georgia, where the University of Georgia is, and I went to the parking lot of the UU Church. It was not open, and I have so many fears, guys, that they're not going to be like you are. Now, in my meditations at night, when I'm calm and I'm quiet and I think about what I want my life to be like, I want my life to have people like Elizabeth in it. Not just the Elizabeth who stands here, but this Elizabeth. The welcoming committee here is by far larger than the folks who wear the yellow tags. When I first came in, I thought that meant hazard. <laughs> I, was, I was wrong. So my intention and my resolve is to not put away the things that scare me because that's who I am. And evidently I'm funny because you guys just laughed. And so there are good things about me too. I think sometimes feeling afraid keeps us safe. And as a mother and as a wife, it's important for me to keep my family safe. But as I walk into the UU church, which I will do the first week that we are there, I will be someone who doesn't have the level of judgment that I had when I first came here. And it will not matter if they have daycare. Thank you. Mm -hmm.